Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. For our fifth graders, we are working tonight on Module 1, Lesson Number 2, and we are reasoning abstractly using place value understanding to relate adjacent base 10 units from millions to thousands. So basically, we're going to be doing a lot of the same kinds of work that we were doing yesterday, uh, sometimes with a little bit less support of a place value chart. We'll try to be doing some of that mentally instead of with a place value chart. But you can continue to use a place value chart as you need to. We're going to take a look at a few problems tonight, and hopefully this will get you started with your homework. Let's take a look at problem number one. The directions could not be simpler. Solve. Okay, I'm going to take a look at 1E and 1F. When I look at 1E, I see it's the number 2.4 multiplied by 100. And I'm thinking to myself, when we multiplied by 10, every single one of these digits became a place value to the left. In other words, the 1's became 10's and the 10's became 1's. We multiply by 100, I think every single one of these digits is going to have to move two places to the left. So I think that means that my 2, which is two 1's, is going to have to become, let's see, two 10's, two 100's, two 100's. Okay, and my four tenths is going to have to move two place values. Let's see, so that's tenths becomes ones becomes tens. So let's see, that's four tens. So if that's two hundreds and four tens, we have zero ones. Hey, I think we've got it. So let's see, 2.4 times 100 is the same as 240. So First thing I want to look at is I multiplied it by 100, so I want to make sure my answer got bigger. I went from 2.4 to 240. Yep, it got a lot bigger. The digits are still the same, and it looks to me like every digit that I originally had moved two places to the left. It used to be two ones, and now boom, boom, it's two one hundreds. And it used to be four tenths over here, and now it moved over one two, and it became four tens. So I'm pretty sure that that's right. Now let's take a look at the second one, which is more difficult. One uh, F. We have 24, and this time we divide by a 1,000. Okay, so when we divide, I know we move place values to the right, right? And it looks like we move. We must be moving three places, right? Because that's the same as dividing by 10, dividing by 10, and dividing by 10 again. That's a 1,000. So let's see. My 2 used to be in the 10s place, and it's going to move over three places. So it's going to move to the 1s place, and then to the 10s place, and then to the 100s place. So let's see. Where is the 100s place? Oh, that's right there, right? That's two hundredths. And my four, which is in the ones place, is going to move to the tens place, then to the hundreds place, then to the thousands place. So it's going to be right there. So again, let me just check my thinking. Sorry, I got a little carried away trying my zeros there. Um, let's see. I divided by a thousand, and the number got much smaller. That's good, right? We ended. We started with twenty-four. We ended up with zero point zero two four or twenty-four thousandths. And how much smaller did it get? Well, it used to be tens. It used to be two tens, and we moved it over one, two, three places. And it used to be four ones, and now we moved that over one, two, three places. Now, again, I've done this without using a place value chart. But if you still need to use a place value chart to solve these problems, no problem. Go ahead and do it. Um, you'll get better at it, and eventually you'll be able to not have to draw the place value chart. You'll be able to just figure it out in your head. Okay? Excellent. Let's take a look at the next problem. Problem number three, find the quotients. This time I'm just going to do 3a. 16.5 divided by 10. Wow, 16.5 divided by 10. Well, let's see. When we divide by 10, we're going to move every digit one place value to the right, meaning one place value smaller. So 110 is going to become 11. One. And let's see, 6 ones is going to become 6 tenths. And 5 tenths is going to become 5 one hundredths. And that, I think, is going to be our answer. Again, let's think through our process. We started with 16.5. We divided by 10, so we know we're going to get smaller. 16.5 divided by 10, we get a smaller number, 1.65, or 1 and 65 hundredths. And I'm pretty happy with how many place values we move over. It looks like we moved over 1 in every case. The 1 went from 10s to 1s. The 6 went from 1s to 10s. And the 5 went from 10s to 100s. Awesome. I'm going to leave 3B and 3C where you have to explain your thinking for you. And let's look at one more problem. Now, number four, I'm not going to do completely. I'm going to get just get you started by helping you to maybe draw a place value chart. And then I'm going to let you take it from there. So let's read first. We say 
in number four, Ted says that 30, I'm sorry, Ted says that three tenths multiplied by 100 equals 300 thousandths. Is he correct? Use a place value chart to explain your answer. So let's do a place value chart first, okay? Let's see, I'm understanding here that we need everything down to thousands. So let's see, I'm going to draw here, I'll get my big decimal, and I know we need tenths, hundreds, and thousands over here, right? And then we need ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, maybe ten thousands, who knows, maybe hundred thousands. I'm just going to do a quick sketch of what these are. That's ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. Okay, and on the other side, I have tenths, I have hundredths, and I have thousandths. Awesome. So what I'm going to do to get you started here is I'm just going to plot out what I think this number is. Three tenths. Three in the tenths unit. Ted says that three tenths multiplied by 100 equals 300 thousandths. So I'm going to leave it to you to figure out what you would need to do to this 3 to multiply it by 100, which direction it would it go, and how many spots over. Is it going to go this way, and how many place values will it go to the left, or is it going to go this way, and how many place values would it go to the right? Once you get that figured out, you'll have to figure out, is that the same as 300 thousands? 300 thousands, I see, 300 thousands. Well, I'm going to leave that to you to figure out, and I thank you for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. See you again next time. Bye-bye.